Now that we know all the windows and all the icons in the application toolbar, let's go and start our first programming. Before we start programming our first queue, we have to tell the programmer first which kind of fixtures we would like to control. Therefore, we have to open the patch dialog, which can be found in the top left corner. Just click on it, and the fixture patch window will open. Inside the fixture patch, we can add fixtures by clicking onto the moving head icon. And we can also choose in which DMX universe we would like to patch these fixtures. Let's start by using DMX universe number 1. Clicking onto the add fixtures icon will open up the fixture library. There is a large amount of different fixtures from different manufacturers already available inside the library. You can also add your own custom fixture by using the library editor. Inside of the generic folder you will find a lot of fixtures that can be used for all kind of purposes. Let's go for the RGB fader fixture and add 4 of them. RGB faders are always used when we would like to control a 3 channel DMX controllable LED fixture. The programmer automatically sets the right DMX address so we can close the fixture patch window for now. As you can see these 4 RGB fader fixtures will now be shown inside the fixture window. Before we can go ahead and program our first queue now we first have to tell the programmer which kind of DMX output device we would like to use. Just open up the device manager in the top application toolbar and the device manager window will pop up. We can now either go to the automatic setup wizard or add a driver manually. Now we can add all kind of different devices such as our favorites, the DMX output devices, DMX input devices, terminals and many more. For now we would like to add a DMX output device, a Butler XT. After we have added the driver, we get to the device properties. We can now enable or disable the driver, we can show the private logbook in the logbook window, we can set a different alias name and the most important we can set the IP address for this output device. The 192.168.1231 is the out of the box IP address of every EQ DMX output device. You can also set which DMX output universe you would like to put out on the two outputs. You can also enable or disable RDM. It won't make any difference if you leave it on, but for now we just put it off. As you can see inside the device manager, the Butler XT status is not set to online yet, but to init. The most obvious reason for this is that we did not configure our local area connection yet, so it will work together with the Butler XT. Let's open up the network and sharing center of Windows Vista in order to take a look on our network configuration settings. You can see the properties of the local area connection by clicking onto the view status button, click onto the properties, and then changing the IP address of the Internet Protocol version 4. Instead of obtaining an IP address automatically, we would like to use the following IP address. Please fill in 192.168.123.1. And the last digit must be a number between 1 and 255, but please make sure that they are never the same IP addresses used in a network. As the Butler XT that we would like to use has a number 1, we can use any other unused IP address here. As there is no device using the number 100 at the end yet in this network, I will use that one. Clicking onto the subnet mask will fill in 3 times 255 and 0, which is fine for us. We don't have to fill in any other values. Please make sure to change the IP address settings to obtain an IP address automatically if you would like to connect to your home or office network again. Otherwise, simply just close all the open windows, as well as the network and sharing center. Taking a look into the device manager, we can see that the Butler XT is online now. So we can start programming. 